It's in the name. Welcome into the Helping Healing Humor with Ben and Travis podcast. On today's episode, our good friend from Faulkner University, uh, President Henry, Mitch Henry, will be joining us for another conversation, and we'll get to those important discussions right after these important messages. This episode of the Helping Healing Humor with Ben and Travis podcast is presented by Faulkner University. Faulkner University is a private Christian liberal arts university based in Montgomery, Alabama, with a mission to provide an education anchored by not only intellect, but also character and service. The Faulkner experience aims to educate the whole person. Every individual matters every day. We all want to become better versions of ourselves. No one wants to remain trapped where they are because of missed opportunities and unrealized dreams. At Faulkner University, we believe your dreams don't have an expiration date. We understand that you're looking for more than a degree. You want to find your niche and thrive in your career. Whether you're a high school senior just beginning your trek or an adult student looking for a better path, Faulkner is here to help guide your journey. Go to faulkner.edu to apply or get more info. That's faulkner.edu. I'm Travis Creasy. That is All Pro Counselor with Three Chord Counseling in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Ben Hayes, how are you today? Just getting ready for school to start back, man. It has been a busy summer, uh, and it's gotten a lot busier these last couple of weeks trying to get uh, ready for stuff. And uh, I'm at the school. I found a quiet spot to sit in. Uh, in the nurse's office, and a good reminder that I am smart. So I'm uh, I'm going with that. I don't know how well that that is true, but I'm glad to be here. How about you? Oh, it's good. I'm in the same mode. Um, I'm not sure when this episode will come out, but uh, we'll probably be in the throes of school. Uh, and of course, Faulkner will probably be kicking up there pretty soon. And mm-hmm. like I said in the intro. Uh, President Mitch Henry is with us again. He joined us back last year, maybe a little earlier in the year, um, but he's back with us. And uh, how are you, sir? I'm doing better than I deserve, uh, for sure. Getting ready for school like you guys. Lots of stuff going on. Soccer team got back on campus uh, yesterday. Uh, Football team uh, got back on campus as well. Lots of new faces. uh, Some great students, and we're getting out and enjoying the daylights out of seeing new people. It's always exciting, lots of energy. Well, I know uh, that from just social media, I know that you have been all over the place, visiting different places, preaching and teaching in different places, and that's always good to see. We're so thankful uh, for all our Christian universities, and of course, Faulkner is a, is a dear friend uh, to Ben and Travis in this podcast, and you guys kind of help keep the lights on, as we like to say, and, and uh, we love going around telling people about Faulkner. Uh, as the school year gets going, um, as we're all kind of in that mode, you know, as a president, and, and almost to some degree, I guess when school starts back, it, it for us anyways, it actually slows down a little bit just because you get back on a structure where you're not going to camp or you're not here or there and we're more kind of at home, but that doesn't mean we're any less busy. Uh, what does that look like for you as the president at Faulkner? Well, right now it's, it's really intense. Uh, we've been putting in uh, 12, sometimes 16 hour days um, in, in the weeks getting ready for preparation. And when, um, when classes start, uh, well, when, when it, it really, it started now, uh, we, we're out there working with our, our students helping them get moved in and, and get settled in, meeting their parents, get make sure the classes are set up like they need to be. But when school starts, uh, we'll have a big convocation ceremony. So a lot of intense preparation for that. We, we partner with Alabama Christian Academy. And so their uh, sophomore juniors and seniors come over to our campus. And uh, it's, it's a special day. We, we praise God. We worship together. We have some, some, um, great speakers and it's a it's a good day and then classes get rolling uh this year we'll be giving all of our freshmen uh bibles that the local churches have uh donated and purchased for us and uh furlongs engraving companies going to engrave them for free now last year when we gave out the bibles to all our students um there were two students that came up to me one with tears in her eyes and she said uh president henry um, this is the most wonderful gift. I've never owned a Bible. And I just was, I was shocked. Uh, and I had a number of faculty members say that. And so 
that that beginning school year time it's so exciting in a lot of ways uh you know all sorts of connections but it's those spiritual connections that mean the most and have the most lasting impact and so that's that's what i look forward to the most and then you know getting in that routine uh, we settle down we, we get into you know teaching and training and and working uh, together but it's the the spiritual things on campus that that i'm most excited about uh, we had um yet day before yesterday uh, when our soccer team arrived um we had some baseball players that have been here for the summer uh two of them got baptized and uh uh, baptized by Jonathan Villa, who is our um, assistant coach and, and team chaplain. And uh, this past Sunday, one of our um, College of Health Sciences professors uh, was baptized. Uh, and uh, it was really cool. Um, our College of Health Sciences and our uh, law school, we have uh, uh, a preference for folks who are members of the Church of Christ, but in those professional programs, you can't always find someone who is a, a member of the church that can teach, uh, you know, radiology or, or mm -hmm. some type of specialized anatomy. So uh, we, uh, we have a few folks on our staff that aren't members of the church. And, and uh, she, uh, she was baptized. Her students came and sat with her on the front row and wow. uh, her faculty did as well. It was just really special. Uh, but lots of good things happen with our, our faculty, staff and our students. Well, I think it's always that's the, one of the most encouraging things that I've heard from you guys over the last several years is just the massive amount of spiritual emphasis that it seems like you put on everything at Faulkner. And uh, it just it's always been kind of uh, heartwarming to me and lightning, you know, just uh, encouraging to see what all you guys do. So sort of speaking to that, you know, we know that that spirituality sort of starts at the top. And so we appreciate you and we appreciate what you uh, do for the college and what you do uh, on a daily basis. But how is it that maybe even as a president that you keep your spiritual life um, sort of at where it needs to be? Well, uh, it's by the grace of God. <laughs> uh, Sounds like you know, <laughs> I, I, when, when this question gets asked to, to a lot of folks, you know, a lot of folks, I'm just amazed by some of the, the self-discipline and uh, the, you know, amazing things that, that, that people do uh, to, to keep themselves equipped and on, on par spiritually. And I, I've got to start off, first of all, guys, uh, uh, by, by doing two things. One, I want to thank you both for asking me on this program and not telling me what you were going to ask and then throw it on <laughs> me at the last minute. But I appreciate it. I love this program and, and I love what you're doing. You are blessings to the brotherhood and, and you guys keep it up. Uh, the second, second thing I want to say is I got to confess my sins. I, I you know, it, it, sometimes I get so caught up in the urgent that I sacrifice the important. And um, it, it happens uh, at times, you know, the devil knows my uh, my temptation toward uh, distraction. Um, I'm like a lot of American males, you know, when you see or, or dogs, when you see the squirrel, you know, it's a squirrel. <laughs> um, but what, what I'll tell you what I've been doing to prepare for this school year. Um, uh, the month of August. Um, really uh for the next several days before we start classes on the 19th i've committed uh to reading the entire new testament um we're two days in i'm on matthew 12. i'm a little behind i gotta hustle if i can <laughs> get her done um each morning uh when my wife and i are able to have breakfast together uh, we we read at least one chapter from the bible and we pray together and um, she's gotten into this uh, uh, English tea deal. Do, do your wives like English tea? Well, just tea, not English tea. tea. Yeah. <laughs> so for the last several months, she said, you know, let, let's grow up a little bit. Instead of eating a granola bar in the car, the truck on the way to school, we're going to get out the fine china. We're going to set it on the table. 
and, and you know, we're going to have eggs, you know, and, and we're going to have real food and you don't drink coffee and I don't, but she said, I'm going to get you some decaffeinated English tea and uh, it, it's sugar. Hot it's tea. It's putting cream in the tea. You yeah. know, I hold my yeah. pinky up even, you know. <laughs> I've had it before. I've, I've had it. I, it's good. Certain, fixed a certain way. It's good. I still got to sweeten it up, though. <laughs> so we're, we're doing that, and, and we're reading in Ezra and Nehemiah. It's been a great study. I, I didn't realize that Ezra and Nehemiah had uh, often been, uh, it was apparently written as one book. And mm -hmm. then, you know, some church father, uh, you know, separated it into two split it up for us yeah well it's making a whole lot more sense to yeah. me now <laughs> yeah that and and uh you know google figuring out who all who's artaxerxes and who's xerxes and who the kings are and and you know it is really really amazing and it's got a lot of similarities with some of the things we're experiencing in our culture today yeah uh you know they were in exile they're in captivity and the more and more oppressive that our culture um, comes on us, the more commonalities I see between us and the faithful folk in the nation of, of Judah uh, before they were taken into captivity and then while they were there and wanting to get back. There's a lot of that that same feeling of of oppression, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and and it's, it's it's been a great study. Uh, as far as praying is concerned, you know, I try to pray every every morning when I get up. Uh, I've gotten to because of, of my my focus and my my tendency to get distracted. Whenever uh, a prayer need comes up um, during the day, um, I have uh, made a commitment, if 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 appropriate, to stop what I'm doing and pray right then. Um, you know, there's so many things coming at me to to remember i don't know if it's like that for you guys or not is it like that for y'all yeah, absolutely oh yeah absolutely and i and i i would confess my sins too because i struggle uh in in the areas of finding um just personal time um I, you know i i will study a lot during the week you know i have a lot of lessons to get together i have a lot of uh even you know when you include school and things like that and so um you know, but then just having that personal time is still a struggle always been. So, you know, sometimes for me, it's in the form of listening to, you know, podcasts, you know, spiritual podcasts or, um, you know, listening to spiritual music just to kind of get my mind focused. And I do the same thing. If somebody says, I need you to pray for me, you know, I'm, <laughs> I don't know, well, let's do that right now, you know, rather yeah. than put it off because I might forget. How about how about you? I'm I'm the same. Um, my prayer, as far as setting aside a time to pray, I'm I'm not great at that. I do try to kind of carry on an ongoing conversation with the Lord. Um, there are certainly days where I call on His name uh, a lot more during the day than others. Uh, we just had a great uh, in service or a retreat, and then today we started our in service. And Monday was a great retreat day. Everything was going great. Tuesday rolls around. It seems like there's a fire to put out every time I turn around. I'm sure you as president of university mm -hmm. know all about that life. And so the interesting thing to me is, is, you know, I, having that consistent prayer life. And you mentioned your wife. I'm sure Ben will agree. My wife is it keeps us kind of balanced and nailed down on that stuff. You know, like here's the important things. Sure, all that's going on, but this is what needs to take place. And so we're very thankful for all of those folks in our lives who do that. But I guess mine's that ongoing conversation. And the interesting thing was, is that I talked to him more on Monday or Tuesday, you know, and, and I tend to say Monday, Monday was a great day. Oh, thank you, Lord. This is great. And then Tuesday when I probably, I don't know if there's a time where we should go more than others. I probably should have had more of a conversation. I didn't. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I think that's the aspect where we have people like ourselves having this conversation, admitting that, hey, it could always be better uh, is is really kind of a bold state statement and mature maturity, Christian maturity. Hopefully at some point I'll reach that level. But um, <laughs> that's kind of that church, you know, and I think mm -hmm. what you mentioned about the professor who became a Christian um, you know, that may not be the avenue of evangelism that we think of first off. 
but whatever gets the job done, right, <laughs> to some degree. And so I think it's the same way spiritually. Yeah. We all have things that we're, we're better at and things maybe not. And so once again, my wife is a, is a very help, help meet in that, if I can use that term mm -hmm. uh, from Genesis and Old Testament. But you guys it's listen great to, to have the awesome. atmosphere that you guys have at Faulkner to, to be reminded. Yep. I'm, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Do you guys listen to music some also? I, oh, yes. I listen to music all the time, but sometimes it's, you know, uh, rock and roll or country or whatever. The last couple of days while I've been working, I've been on this vocal union acapella kick. I hadn't listened to some of those guys in years, and I found a couple of the old CDs that I, CDs that I had. I found them on Amazon Music or uh, Apple Music, and I pulled them yeah. up, and I've just been – playing some of those and it makes me think I'm back in the nineties because you know, some of them are very obviously 90 themed sounding mm. songs, but uh, even though they're acapella, yeah. uh, but it's been fun listening to them and that, and that I've gotten, there's actually several of them have kind of hit me hard this week, you know, mm. spiritual thoughts of them. And I thought it was pretty good. So Cindy and I found, um, well, she did, uh, she found the Spotify channel that is acapella music and it's, it's Church of Christ uh, acapella singing groups from all over the place. Harding's course is on there. Oh, they're um, great. There, there's um, acapella Ridge. There's there's several on there. Uh, Keith Lancaster's congregational singing is on there. And we we uh, took some time off. Went to the Grand Hotel down at Point Clear uh, near Mobile and in Baldwin County. There um, we were listening to it and just feeling so good. And and we we got. Uh, to the hotel uh, Sunday afternoon and, and uh, we got out of our car and uh, it, we were shocked. The grand hotel on the speakers there where you unload um, it, they were playing um, acapella music and it, it church music. And, and I thought, what in the world? And uh, we went in the, the lobby to check in and uh, you know, lo and behold, they were, um, they were playing it there and I almost said something to the, to the clerk as she was checking us in. And then, uh, the, the ballet took the, uh, uh, or, or bell, bell person took the, the cart on up, upstairs. When we got in our room, it, it was kind of like, I don't know if y'all have ever been to, uh, to Georgia, to, to Rome, Georgia, to, um, uh, Berry college where, yeah. where Chick-fil-A has. Yeah. That's a, incredible. A great. Nice. Wind, wind shape is wind the name shape. of it. Yeah. Right. They play acapella. Well, it's not always acapella, but they play spiritual music mm -hmm. in the in the the rooms. And they were doing that at the Grand Hotel. It's a Marriott, you know. Awesome. What is that? Yeah. What is? <laughs> and so I, I was looking around to try to find the speaker for the room, and then I realized that it was coming from the dresser where my wife's purse was. It was playing on her cell phone in her purse, <laughs> and you thought it was playing through the hotel. <laughs> That's nice. awesome. So I'm technologically challenged, man. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, we know that last year you had the Connect uh, Leadership event, and we you had it this year. And so we'll bring that up. But also on October the 3rd, I believe, is, uh, you know, your, your good old coaching pal. I'm sure that you had a lot of uh, pointers for coach Nick Saban when he was coaching. So now that y'all are not doing the business of coaching anymore, uh, then y'all can just hang out as good friends on October 3rd at the benefit dinner. Uh, so just speak to those two events connect, I believe was in June. Uh, and then this it event was. with Nick Saban is in, in October. It was, uh, we had a great leaders connect conference. It was, um, elders and ministers from all over the Southeast. Um, good group. I want it to be better attended. You know, there's there's so much good that happens with it. Had some amazing speakers. Uh, it was really a, a nuts and bolts practical uh, gathering. Uh, we uh, had presentations on on uh, audio video. We had presentations on on uh, legacy giving and how people need to have wills and and uh, trust and and need to have powers of attorney and those, those basic estate documents, which by the way, if you got kids, I hope you guys have got a last will and testament. 
Working Some on of those it. things I need to work on. <laughs> oh, brother. You actually are working on it. Yes. I mean, y'all live in the state of Alabama. If you don't have a will that says who gets your kids as their guardian, guess who's going to decide for you? State. It's going to be a local probate judge, and they may or may not pick the right person. The statute says it's got to be first the uh, maternal grandmother, and that may or may not be what you need. Uh, so, guys, um, uh, listen, uh, y'all call me afterwards. I'll have to go with a, I know some lawyers up there that might even do it for free. Wow. For you. So, in Tennessee, I'm not sure how all that, that works necessarily, but but in Alabama, man, y'all need that. So it, it was a great conference. We talked about practical things like that, and, and uh, we really enjoyed it. And it kind of got the campus primed a little bit for our legacy event, which was uh, we had 400 folks, uh, mostly young people on our campus uh, for a retreat for a week. And uh, that was a great event. Very well done by a bunch of, bunch of folks. That's awesome. And so the benefit up, are you guys excited about that? Yeah, I am. I, I'm I'm thrilled about it. It is he is an amazing person. That's hard for an Auburn fan to say. Um, <laughs> our theme this year is uh, adoption and foster care. And oh, Nick wow. Saban and his wife Terry adopted their two children. Uh, they've not been secretive about it, and wow. uh, they have done a wonderful job uh, with, with with that their family and. Uh, they set up an amazing uh, foundation. You probably heard of Nick's Kids, mm -hmm. uh, and the the funds are used to support organizations that that uh, engage with vulnerable children, be it education, be it uh, uh, through uh, services for foster children or adopted children, and it's it's just a wonderful, wonderful organization. And we're excited about what he's going to have to say. We're going to celebrate the heroes of. Adopt, adoption and foster care, and there's so many in this state. We've got uh, agape. We've got state workers. We, we've got uh, you know volunteers in surrounding states that are just doing amazing work for uh, for God's people. And you know what did James say about pure religion? You know, it's to visit the fatherless uh, and, and those the widows uh, who are in need and to keep yourself unspotted from the world. And, and so we're, we're excited about celebrating that. Now I, I got to confess to you, I had mixed emotions um, being an Auburn fan, uh, but I can feel pretty good sitting at a table with Nick Saban on a Thursday night during SEC football season, knowing that he's not out somewhere scheming and watching film <laughs> on how he's going to beat Auburn unexpectedly on the last play in the Iron Bowl. Yeah. At Albert. Hey, parents and young adventurers, are you ready to embark on an extraordinary journey? Introducing the adventures of Ben and Travis and the Worry Coaster, a thrilling ride through the ups and downs of mental health in our new children's book. Join our dynamic duo as they navigate the twists and turns of their emotions while discovering the courage to conquer their worries. Pre-order your ticket to adventure now at benandtravis.com backslash books and be among the first to embark on this roller coaster of resilience. Let's turn worry into wonder and empower kids to embrace their feelings with bravery and hope. Buckle up. It's going to be an unforgettable ride. My wife and I wrote a book about our um, my diagnosis with leukemia while we were foster parents. And we actually mentioned uh, Coach Saban. He does those, um, those PSA uh, commercials. Right. And so that obviously influenced me as one of those awful Alabama fans. Uh, to get into to the foster care and uh, and so uh, that that's awesome. I was able to go to the Drew Brees event last year and it was phenomenal event. You guys Wonderful. did a tremendous job and of course there's not a dry eye in the building when you bring out the people who uh, were affected or have been heroes uh, in those situations where the unfortunate loss of life or or something along those lines. And I'm sure it'll be the same this year uh, when you bring out the foster care heroes, but it was just so well done. And Whitney and I both got to come and, and attend. And while I can't uh, express to the people listening out there that if you're going to be in the area on October 3rd, that you should make plans to, to be there. Of course, it's in support of a great cause. And the fact that y'all take time to honor people 
uh, who have served in the different capacities, whatever choice y'all make every year. That's a tremendous thing to think of others when you get to do that. And then just a few short weeks later, uh, you guys are having mercy and grace as in you're allowing Ben and I to come back on campus uh, for your Bible lectureship, which was a tremendous event despite our attendance last year. And of course, y'all had the um, the debate, which was such a big event and well done yet again. And so just looking forward to that in October. I mean, it's, that's a big month. I mean, you got August with everything kind of kicking off and y'all hit the hit it running. You know, you'll have football games and then Nick Saban coming to town. And then, of course, the lectureship a few weeks later. We're, we're so excited about the lectureship this year. Uh, you know, in the history of the university, um, you know, uh, 80 plus years, we have never had the theme grace as a theme for the lectureship. And that is our theme this year. And man, uh, if, if there's ever time in this country or culture or time in our lives in the church that, that we need grace, it's now. So that's our, that's our theme this year. We're, we're mashing up homecoming with, um, with the lectureship. So we'll start uh, student events and uh, competitions uh, amongst the clubs and uh, different athletic teams um, on Thursday. And then on um, uh, Friday, uh, we've got a lot of, lot of events like that. Um, we've invited the winners of the Lads to Leaders competition, uh, public speaking competition in uh, multiple, uh, multiple cities, host cities, uh, to come to Faulkner for the second, uh, which will now be a second annual uh, Jack Zorn Invitational uh, final round amongst all those winners. And uh, the top male and the top female will give away a 100% tuition free scholarship. Wow. And we're excited about that. And uh, on Saturday, we'll, yeah. <laughs> oh, on Saturday, we'll have a uh, right now, there's plans for a parade. We'll have a number of uh, uh, bands, and uh, not just ours, but high school bands there. And uh, this is this is a secret, but um, we signed the paperwork to have a flyover by the 187th Air Division from Danley Field, which is the F-35 uh, division. And weather permitting, and uh, there being no national emergency, uh, we're going to have a, a military flyover, and we're excited about that. Um, we're going to honor our military that day, so we're expecting expecting large crowd on on Saturday uh, before the the lectureship begins. So that'll be the the nineteenth. That's awesome. And then on the twentieth, we'll we'll have some worship together. Uh, the last of leaders, uh, young men, will be helping us with that. Uh, great keynote speakers on our, our lectureship this year. Um, and uh, our debate, we've got a debate topic this year. Our theme for the university is relevance. So our debate topic this year is this. Uh, the, the affirmative is gambling is immoral. And so we have um, found a nationally known attorney and lobbyist named Jim uh, Purcell, who is uh, from New Jersey. And we are flying him down here to our campus uh, to engage in an academic debate on the topic. And uh, David, uh, 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 gracious me, uh, Hester. Hester. I almost said, almost said David Herrick, uh, who is an old client of mine. Uh, what time is it? Every day at 3 o'clock. It's 3 o'clock. Every day at 3 o'clock, I will transpose names. <laughs> and I knew Herrick wasn't right. So I'm, I'm really embarrassed, David, when you watch this. I'm sorry, man. I, but it, David Hester, our own Bible department professor, is going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the smartest, most well-known uh, influencers in the gambling industry. Uh, if you pay attention in our state last year in the legislature, we were one vote short of becoming a massively friendly gambling state with casino gambling, sports betting gambling, every type of gambling you can imagine. And it was a, a knockdown, drag out fight 
I, I talked to a lot of folks who are on the front lines of it. And, um, you know, I, I don't mind saying that as the president of the university, uh, we're going to take uh, a position that is uh, appropriate and fair with regard to the debate. But if anybody's watching out there, I want to encourage you uh, to watch the debate. I'm confident after you watch it, uh, you'll um, be well informed. Uh, my hope is that you feel gambling is immoral uh, and, and don't do it. And um, uh, you'll be a whole lot happier. I remember when I was in Tuscaloosa in law school, we adopted a student. It's an international student, absolute genius. And uh, he came knocking on our door one Saturday. And uh, I said, why don't you drive your car? He, he didn't bring his car. He said, well, I walked here. Um, he said, I, I'm out of gas money. I'm out of food money. I just want to see if y'all can get me something to eat. I said, what happened to your food? He said, um, well, I've, I've, I've been gambling. I said, where are you going to gambling? He said, I went across the state line over there to Mississippi. And uh, I said, well, well, you need to stop it. Uh, I'll go and I'll buy you some food. I'm not going to give you money because uh, you might go gamble it. He said, I don't, I, don't want you, I don't want money. He said, but, but if you did give some money, um, you know, that would be helpful too. I said, well, are you going to gamble again? He said, yeah, if I can get a little more money, I'm going to do it. I've got a good system going. Oh, man. A good said, system no. that's got you have food. <laughs> do you know what his, his, he was getting his PhD in finance. Oh, wow. Oh, uh. <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh, so a system. Well, that'll be an awesome, that, an awesome ever since event. that time, man, I have been so opposed to gambling. It, it was ruining the guy's life and it's ruined so many lives. I practiced law for 29 years. So I can't tell you. How many folks? I'll tell you one other quick sad story. In my first law firm that I went to, we had a uh, uh, a manager there uh, uh, that that unfortunately got addicted to gambling and uh, was stealing from a bunch of lawyers. You know, it's you're pretty desperate if you're stealing from lawyers. That's almost as bad as as you know taking a, a coal out of the church. Uh, uh, air conditioner and selling it for scrap metal, you know, um, you don't need to be stealing from lawyers. So he did. And, uh, on the day that he was going to be sentenced, he had pled guilty on the day he was going to be sentenced. He took his life. You know, yeah. I, I've just seen gambling ruin too many people. Yeah. And, um, so we're excited about that being our debate topic this year. And, uh, can't wait to, to see this. It's going to be a world-class debate. It will be on the 24th, which is Thursday. And that will be the only lectureship event. It'll be the finale. Uh, we'll be live streaming it and uh, hope that you'll come. If you can't come, hope you'll catch the live stream and share it with your friends. Yeah, go check out the one from last year. It was phenomenal. I'm sure that all you're going to do is increase, move that bar a little higher every year. And it was, that, that's awesome. Um, as we do here on this show, we oftentimes ask a fun question to reveal a little bit of the personality. That's not hard with you. You've already revealed a lot of that. It's been great uh, having you on the second time. We don't have a lot of that. We don't have a lot of repeats. So we're thankful that you chose to be with us. But here's a this this causes a lot of um, arguments, and so it's it's a heated debate. And so we come to you today as the president of Faulkner University to drive home the answer, the, the true answer. And President Henry, does pineapple belong on pizza? <laughs> I had it last night. Yeah. It is delicious. Absolutely amazing. Right. It, it was one of those fresh out of pizzas that I got from Winn-Dixie and it's great dough. The cheese is perfect. So, you know, the Canadian, it wasn't Canadian bacon, it was ham slices and, and the pineapple, it was, it was great. You know, for a frozen pizza, it was wonderful. And don't tell Cindy because I'm trying to lose a little weight, but I ate three quarters of the whole pizza. It was only one little pizza, <laughs> left, piece of it so left. I'll say his answer in is yes. Yes. It belongs on pizza. That's mm -hmm. excellent. That's excellent. fantastic. Pineapple is one of the only fruit uh that i like uh, i don't like any other kind of fruit <laughs> i will say uh that roxy wisham 
is I was just checking the stats here. He was on the epi- on the show a long time ago, and he actually has the most downloaded episode of our of of our like the audio, uh, <laughs> the most downloaded episode that we've done. And so uh, maybe you'll catch him. Maybe right now you'll catch him, uh, and maybe you can promote that. There's no way I can catch Santa Claus, man. Uh, he's grown that beard. You know, I, I caught him last year moonlighting at the uh, Bass Pro Shops uh, having, playing Santa Claus. Kids on his knee. Yeah. Incredible. Very nice. I love Roxy Wisham. He is a man of God. He's, he's taught me into two things in my life. One was becoming an elder at Vaughn Park Church of Christ for a very short period of time. And the other was becoming president of this school. He, uh, he was an encourager for it. So I love Brother Roxy. He's a good man. We sure do appreciate you joining us again. And Thanks, obviously man. the invite is always open. Anytime you want to come back, we will make it happen. Well, thank you, gentlemen. We sure look forward to, to seeing y'all uh, in, in October. And God bless you for all the good that you do and all the happy hours that you get to spend together and that your, your audience gets to spend with you. Just so proud of you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for being with us for this episode of the Helping Healing Humor podcast. Be sure to download our free ebook, 28 Days of Focus Living, at benandtravis.com and receive all of our Helping Healing and Humor extra content directly in your inbox. We look forward to having you join us at the same Ben and Travis time, same Ben and Travis channel.